Hey guys, what's up? It's Zola, and today I'm going to be showing you how to mask. And the masking section of this um, tutorial series will probably be split into two or three parts because there's a lot to cover. You can you can mask in. There's mainly three ways to to add a mask to something, and by mask I mean when you're trying to separate an item from a background. So in this case, I have um, a short clip from the straight ripping montage. Uh, as you can see here, my I made my timeline in the way I usually do by dragging the footage down, and it's way too big. I only want like a small, like maybe two second chunk out of this. So what I've done is I've moved to the start point of this clip. I I want this red spot coming up the lift, and you know I don't really need anything further from this. So I'm going to hit N to make this my render my loop area. So when I loop, it will loop just this area, like so. But if you right click this area, you can do trim comp to work area. And what this will do is make the total length of your composition only as long as this, which is really useful. So now I just have, you know, instead of having a 10 minute composition, I just have like um, a one and a half second composition. And when I loop this, it's just going to loop this section, which is what we want. Um, so yeah, so let's say I want to, uh, I don't know, maybe I want to make this Spartan flash white, or maybe I want to make him blue or whatever. The point is first you want to separate him from everything else that's going on in the clip and then after that you can apply the effect you want whether that's changing his color, whether that's you know like making him flash white like I said or, or any other kind of crazy effect. So how would we do this? I showed you kind of briefly in the um, in the effects tutorial uh, with the compositing options but uh, we basically have to create a mask for this guy so what I'm going to do is find like because the, the, the Spartan itself doesn't really move that much. So um, I'm going to try and find a frame like maybe this one. And I'm going to zoom in. Uh, move up here. I'm going to select my layer, which is important. And the first way I'm going to show you is by using the pen tool. Um, the pen tool is just like in Photoshop. You uh, just drag points. Um, around so again make sure you got your layer selected or you're going to do um, a shape layer which is not what we want here and I'm literally just going to drag and make little points within the um, the area of the spot in here and I'm going to maybe speed this up a bit just for the sake of not boring you guys too much. Um, if you hold and drag, you get these rounded corners. If not, you just get the straight corners. And you can always come back and change what kind kind of corner you have. Um, yeah, let's speed this up anyway. Boop. Right, okay. So now we have our spot and separated. And great. What's happened to the rest of my layer? Well, what happens when you make a mask on something is by default, you, the mask will activate and you'll keep everything inside and we've lost all the background, which is really annoying um, because obviously we want the background. So what I'm going to do is for now, if you hit M, you get the mask and the mask itself has lots of options. So um, let's see what it does. Uh, so the mask path is basically the shape of the mask. And as you can see, we can keyframe all of these, and that's what we're going to turn on to uh, animate this mask. Um, you can select the type of uh, what the mask does. So you have subtract, which would like remove him from the background. Intersect is when you have two masks, and it will keep the area that's overlapping. Uh, which you know, uh, I I very rarely use one of these three, but uh, sometimes you gonna have like one or two masks and you might only want the area that overlaps to be um, visible or vice versa so uh, I don't really use these last four that much I mean most of the ones you're gonna want are add or subtract and you can always invert that as well um, which is the same as subtracting really uh, the feather down here allows you to uh, obviously soften the area around and it's always a good idea to have a slight amount of feather usually one pixel is all right um, you can even go into like 0.5 sometimes uh, it really depends on what you're working I think 0.5 works well here maybe like 0.6 or 7 um, 
mass capacity is just you know the opacity of uh, the, the whole thing not that useful really and, and expansion is kind of cool because it kind of expands or contracts the area so if you want to kind of like fade this in you could do that as a transition like there just animate the um the mask so that's kind of cool okay so now that we've explained that i'm going to change this to none this doesn't mean that the mask is not working, it just means that I'm not using it right now. And that's what I'm gonna need because I'm gonna keyframe the mask path. And now I'm gonna move forward a few frames, so like maybe two or three, and I'm gonna drag the mask roughly to where it should be. Now you can see it doesn't really line up anymore, so I'm gonna have to pull some points around. Uh, but fortunately, you know, this is still not too bad. And you know, you know, as a disclaimer, masking is the slowest thing you will ever have to do in After Effects. There, there are ways to get faster at it, and I'll try and cover those. But and if you've watched the Legacy Breakdown, actually, I use a lot of the tips that I would recommend in that. So uh, that's on the channel somewhere, on my channel somewhere. Uh, if you go watch that, I cover masking for a long period of time on that. So that might be a good place to start. But basically, yeah, masking is just a dirty job and it's got to be done. And as you can see here, even the frames in between aren't really matching. So if you double click on a point, you will get the whole mask and you can kind of like scale it and move it. Uh, you know, you're never going to get it perfect. And then again, with the mask selected, um, you can drag and select points like so. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Again, if I was doing this properly, I would be way more precious about it, but in the interest of keeping things at about 10 minutes, there are thereabouts, that's gonna have to do. Um, so let's move this down and maybe up a bit slightly. Uh, let's just assume that's not too horrible. And move this down again. And again, just try and like the gun has completely like it's completely messed up at the moment so I'm gonna obviously these parts are gonna overlap so I need to move those around let's just assume that's not too horrible as well this this frame in between is completely gone because his movement is non-linear it's a bit erratic because After Effects basically um, draws moves the mask in a straight line between these keyframes which is fine if the guy's moving in you know a straight line but when a Spartan comes up one of these lifts, he comes up and then he suddenly shoots right, so um, you can understand why After Effects is struggling to keep up with him. So uh, let's let's just say that's cool. Um, so yeah, you have a mask and now you can add and we can see what our mask is doing here. It's not too horrible, it's not the best, but it's not too horrible. And now I can apply my effect to said mask. So um, again, this is like I showed you in the effects, um, the effects tutorial. I'm going to add a hue saturation uh, to this Spartan, and I'm going to make him. I'm not even going to make. It. I'm going to make the reds go to the reds, and I'm going to make those like maybe blue-ish. This is wielding some slightly odd results. I'm just going to widen this area here. Don't worry about what I'm doing too much. Um, and now we're going to go to effects, hue saturation, compositing options. We're going to add a mask. And there we go. So now we have this hue saturation applied, but only to the Spartan. Back in the olden days, you would have had to duplicate this layer. So you would have made a duplicate, control D, the one underneath, you would have turned the mask off. And on here, you would have just, you know, done your, uh, if you go to effects, because we didn't have compositing options, I would have like removed that. So basically you would have had one layer on here, which was your affected layer. And then you would have had the layer underneath, which was just the regular footage with no effects on, um, kind of like this, this would have had no mask on as well. So it would have been your base footage and then the layer above would have had the effect applied, but only within the mask. But now you can do it all on one layer, which is kind of cool. So um, 
remove that out of my mask and there we go we have you know we have um, a, a green green teal Spartan and that is how to add masks to moving footage uh, I'm gonna explain the other methods now uh, but this is the point where you would go in and maybe tweak the feathering so maybe just soften it up a bit um, I've added like 14 pixel feather and can you see now it's just a bit less um, harsh obviously the problem here is we have the text as well overlapping so you've got to bear that in mind uh, you could be really really like picky about it and go and try and mask out then the the red letters or try and use the kind of isolate them with um, one of the other masking techniques I've shown so we'll cover those in another lesson but those are the very basics about adding masks you can add them to footage uh, if I delete this I can make a new layer new solid make a green solid and you can add mask in other ways so we have I've shown you the pen tool and the pen tool is the way I've just used now but there's a new part to the pen tool which is also worth noting as I've shown you if you hit F you can feather the edges but there's another feature here called the mask feather tool and this allows you to add points so when you add the first point to your mask you can feather it out but maybe here I want zero feather so I can bring the feathering in and now you can see I've got a mask which is hard hard on one side like so but yeah, like still soft on this side. And so like I can make, maybe it goes um, hard again. Or you can add them inside and outside, which is what I've done here. Uh, so here I've feathered the inside and maybe I want to feather the outside as well. And if I show you that on black, you can see how you can create some really advanced masking effects. And again, all this is keyframeable. So as soon as you animate the mask path, and move that along um, you can get you know you can animate this mask moving around and stuff which is kind of cool so uh, that's those are masks that way you can also add masks um, here we have the rectangle mask if I hold this down you can see the shapes we have the polygon tool which uh, basically if you press up and down allows you to add more sides to the mask so you can have like a hexagon a pentagon diamond or whatever um, Again, same thing, creates a mask with all the all the same options. You've got the expansion and all that kind of stuff. And last but not least, you've got the star tool, which also works in the same way. If you hold shift, your mask will scale normally. Uh, if you hold control here, you can like move the points in and out. So um, you can do like the star shape in or out or less, less starry, I guess. <laughs> If you hold Shift and Alt, you can uh, drag and scale it from the middle. And then if you hold Spacebar, you can move your mask around as you're making it. So a few tips there when it comes to making your mask. And once you've made it, obviously, you can move these points around. So them's the basics of... Oh, it's looked like he's doing a star jump or something. Um, those are the basics of masking. And next, we will be covering roto brush and matting and what a mat is. So I hope to see you in those lessons.